Hey guys and welcome to the video and here today I'm going to show you how to flash your ESP8266 little mini Wi-Fi board using your phone. Now obviously of course there's going to be some prerequisites to this um, so I'm going to go ahead and cover those with the first one being that we'll be using an Android phone. I'm pretty sure there's a way to maybe do this on Apple but I don't deal with Apple products, so I'm not really sure. You'll have to figure that out on your own. The other thing is that the firmware we'll be flashing into the ESP board is the firmware that I showcased and went over in yesterday's video, which I'm showing you here. In that video, once I showed you, you know, the flashing part and everything, I went over some of the features and things that you can do and how to connect and all that good stuff. Instead of doing that all over again here today, once we're done, just go into the description and I will link the um, uh, this video there. And I'll also put a little time there so you know when to start watching it. And you can just start watching from that section. So you don't have to watch that whole video from the beginning. And you can just watch the part where I go over some of the features and stuff of this firmware because it is an amazing little piece of firmware. In that video I show you like I am here, once we're done flashing it, you'll be able either with your PC or with your phone, tablet or whatever, you can connect via Wi-Fi to your ESP and once you do that through that device's browser like your phone, you can do what I'm showing you here um, and get access to the um, to the ESP. So you can access the file manager, you can do a file uploader and upload the files directly to your ESP right from your phone. You can also delete them once you go into the file manager like it is here. You can delete the files, you can do a batch delete just by clearing out the whole uh, storage. Um, yeah, so there's a lot you can do. Anyway, that video will explain everything. All right, and now guys, the next thing is that you are going to need to obviously connect your phone to the ESP board. And to bridge them together, you're going to need a little piece of hardware called an OTG cable. And these are in abundance everywhere online. You can get them on Amazon, eBay, wherever, and they range in price. Um, the one I'm showing you happens to be the ones that I use. I have two of these that I bought, I think, two or three years ago, and they're these exact same ones. These have a high rating on eBay. The person that is selling them has a 99.6% positive feedback rating. They're located here in the U.S. If you live somewhere in the continental U.S., you should get it within a week because the price already comes with expedited shipping built in, and the cost is only two dollars and 39 cents that's it taxes shipping and everything included so I'll put a link to that in case you're interested but you can get honestly whichever ones you want and then once it gets there you're going to want to um, you know get it all connected but first you may have to enable USB debugging on your phone so to enable USB debugging you should already know how to do this but this uh, is just so uh, we cover all the bases here. Go into About Phone. You're going to go into Software Info uh, where it says Android version and all that good stuff. Then you are going to go here to where it says Build Number and you're going to tap on it several times, like about seven or eight times in a row very quickly and it will say that it unlocked the developer options. And then when you come here, you should see them and go into it and simply just scroll until you see USB debugging and then go ahead and enable it. All right, and then we move on to our next thing, and that is to connect the ESP to your phone. And when you do, it should look something like this. Now, I know my USB cable that's going into my ESP is a little bit on the longer side, but it's the one I always use because it's very reliable. So you can see how I have it hooked up, and here's the OTG cable. All right, guys, and the next thing you need to do is go into the Play Store on your phone and install this app here, the ESP8266 Loader by Blueino Electronics. You can see I already have it installed, and it has a high rating. Uh, there's a niche that I need to cover with you on this app and with some of the other apps because I tested out a few, and I seem to run into the same issue. These apps work great, but... They only seem to flash your ESP board when the bin consists of just the firmware only. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, 
once you've finished your sketch and you convert that to a bin, that's what you need to flash. If your bin contains the firmware and it contains data, uh, data files, then you're going to get kicked back with an error and it will not flash. This is important for those of you who are planning on using this, these little ESP boards for PS4 exploits because a lot of people out there have made um, bin files for you to flash into your ESP boards, but the bin files 99% of the time contain the firmware and they contain the exploit, which are, of course, the files themselves. And those files need to be put somewhere else separate from the firmware on the ESP board. When you're using the PC, most of the software that flashes these boards they know how to separate from that bin file the files to the proper location and then the firmware to the proper location but these apps don't seem to do that they only work just to flash firmware only now luckily and i'm probably the only person that made the um, firmware separate so in my repository i do have the complete version which has the exploit and the firmware but here in this video I will link, direct link, only the firmware only version. That way it will work with this app that we're showing you here today. Once you flash your ESP, then following that video, the one we talked about earlier, um, that you can go ahead and watch after we're done here, that's going to show you how you can use your browser to, you know, just upload all the files you want into your ESP. Um, you know, your self-host exploit files or whatever. All right, so after you've installed that, <clears throat> you should have everything hooked up like the way I showed you in the picture earlier. Now, what I'm going to show you here is just a matter of preference. I'm going to go into the file manager, and you can use any file manager you want on your phone. Um, in my downloads folder, I downloaded that firmware-only bin file we talked about earlier. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to make a copy of it. I'll leave it there. And what I'm going to do is then I'm going to go into where my main folders are in the internal portion of my phone. And when you install that app, it, it, it makes a folder here called ESP8266 Loader. You can go into it, and I like to create a folder here. So using this uh, folder manager or file manager or whatever, I'm going to go here, create a folder. And let's just call it KMZ Firmware. There we go. Hit OK. All right. And then I'm going to go in there. And we are going to paste our firmware. There we go. Now, you can have multiple folders here if you want or whatever. And this basic example ones, that one downloads when you install the firmware. All right. So now we're ready to, I mean, when you install the app. So let's go ahead and let's go to the app now. Let's go ahead and get it started. Remember our board and everything is connected. So here on top, if we just click on it one time, we'll see all this here, all right? And by default, it will be in the examples folder. And these are all the example bins here. So let's click this yellow folder up on top of the two dots. And you can see the folder that we created is now there and it has the firmware. So let's go ahead and click that and now that will be here. Go ahead and click on this button here, the one with the magnifying glass inside of the square and it should connect to your ESP. And there we go. It shows that it is connected and it shows the baud rate. That's exactly what we want. All right, so let's go ahead and click this back arrow, and now let's click on the upload uh, button, and it should start flashing. Okay, and you can see that it finished. It let us know that it finished, and then, of course, it went to this add. No big deal. And that's pretty much it, guys. All you need to do now is disconnect the USB cable that's connected to your ESP board from the OTG. You can then connect it to the uh, you know, any USB port that has power current going through it so that way it can power up the ESP. Once you plug it into that USB port, wait a couple of seconds. If the ESB, uh, ESP board has a reset button, hold it down for like three or four seconds and then let it go. If you follow those steps, plug it into the port, 
hold down the reset button for three or four seconds after you've plugged it in and let it go. Um, it'll do a nice fresh reset or reboot, whatever, and then you should see the Wi-Fi start popping up almost immediately, like within five to ten seconds afterwards. And that's pretty much it. Again, if you want to see all the features and all the cool stuff that this particular firmware can do, again, I will put the link in the description uh, with the time so you can, you know, fast forward to that time and then you can watch it, um, you know, all the way to the end if you like. I there's even a portion where I cover some of the PS4 stuff and whatnot. So don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe, guys, and we will see you on the next one.